The Skanda Malaysia, or the Skanda Development Region (IDR), is a region in southern Johor established in 2006. It has five different flagship zones, namely Johor Bahru City Centre, Nusa Jaya, Western Gate Development, Eastern Gate Development, and Sunai Skudai. Did you know that the IDR is approximately three times the size of Singapore, and it currently spans across 2,000. 217 square kilometers. Features of the IDR. The IDR currently specializes in these few industries. Firstly, in healthcare. Secondly, in tourism. Thirdly, in finance, and of course, many more. Problems we face. How are we vulnerable to the effects of the IDR? Firstly. There exists labour curbs to protect Singaporeans' interests. Also, as a small city, we first experience a lack of space. And lastly, we face rising property prices. All of our shortcomings has therefore made the idea a land of opportunities. So, what exactly makes them so attractive for businesses? Well, there are appealing measures currently in place. For example, lower startup costs, which reduces the cost of production for firms, making the economy extremely attractive. This, as a result, gave the IDR a price competitive advantage over neighboring countries like Singapore, and as a result, Singapore could experience a fall in its inflow of foreign investments. Collaborations, a possibility, amidst the challenges the IDR poses. Is there perhaps an opportunity for us to collaborate? The answer is definitely yes. Every cloud has a silver lining. Firstly, MNCs could benefit from this collaboration, as the IDR is a relatively new development. Financial and legal services are less established. MNCs may therefore choose to set up the headquarters in Singapore to enjoy reliable critical processes such as management and law here. Whilst benefiting from low labour and manufacturing costs throughout sourcing to Iskanda, this is therefore a win-win situation. Secondly, we can benefit from transportational links. With Singapore's close proximity to the IDR, Singapore can be the transport hub, delivering essential resources and goods to the IDR. With train lines connecting the two countries, labour and other factors of production. Can be transported more efficiently across borders. Trade between the two countries would therefore increase. Obstacles. What are the shortcomings the IDR faces? The first and most overt one being a long gestation period. As a new region, the growth of the IDR may be less pronounced in the short run, as it will take time for the infrastructure to be developed. This could mean that the effects of the IDR on Singapore. Will not be extremely significant in the short run. And secondly, the IDR experiences a lack of funding. This is brought about because of the competition for government funds with both KL and Penang, regions where the government also hope to develop. This could mean that the IDR would actively seek for more FDIs, and as a result, Singapore might lose these investments. This would thus affect our financial account. Nonetheless, these investments to the IDR could in fact benefit us. Singaporean firms could gain from these economies of scale and thus lower their unit costs of production. In conclusion, it is impossible for Singapore to ignore the IDR's economic growth, and therefore, we should strive for collaborations with the IDR and constantly upgrade ourselves to gain new comparative advantages. Eventually, both countries will benefit from this new development. Thank you.